Hey guys, welcome back to I Know Fabricator. I'm Steven and it is good to be back in the shop today. Guess what? I finished the brakes on the 53 Chevy truck. I got it up in the air so that I can do a walk around and show you guys what I did and how I did it. And uh, it's gonna be fun. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so every time I put out an action-packed video, you'll get notified of it, all right? So let's get into this. All right, so let's start at the back of the truck and let me show you what I did. Uh, I used stainless line. I think I mentioned that before. And that called for a dash three uh, fitting. So this is an adapter right here that screws into the wheel cylinder. And it goes from the 45 double flare to an AN dash three. So anyway, it comes along here, goes into a T, I don't know, can you see that okay? Goes into a T there, and then down along the axle housing, up and over the hoop, and over to the other side. Okay? Now, one of the things that I figured out, and I wanted to share with you guys, the first time I tried this, I started at this end, and made these bends, and by the time I got to here, it got really complicated because I wanted this bend and this bend to be in the same spot. It was just really hard to figure it out. And so I figured out a better way to do it. I started in the middle, bent this first, taped it up here so it was in place, and then I marked this here, made this bend, and then came over to both sides. And uh, anyway, what I discovered was if sometimes if you start in the middle, it's easier because when when you start at one deal and you make a, like a 45 and then you make a 90 and then you make a little twist and by the time you get five bends into it, man, it gets confusing and, and you end up like I did bending it the wrong direction. So um, anyway, start in the middle. It works great. So that's the back part. And then come under here and I'll show the guys what we did here. This little tab here is just welded onto the... Uh, to the axle housing. And then just a piece of flex line here, okay? And I didn't know this, but I found it out later. There's actually DOT approved flex line and competition flex line. So I don't like to take chances on brakes, so I went DOT approved. And it's the same price, so um, it's worth it. And this has kind of a vinyl covering on it, so I don't know. It's pretty nice. So it goes into a tab here. Anytime you go from flex line to a hard line, you're going to need a tab. And this is called a bulkhead fitting. So it has that nut here that tightens it onto the tab. So from here, I had to bring it back down to the frame. So 45 degrees and then over here and then a 45 here. And then we'll come underneath the truck. And we come out, another 45, so it lays tight against the frame. And I get the light up here so you guys can see that. And it just follows along the frame. I wanted it up high so it wouldn't be near the exhaust. And then from here, it goes up to another junction box. So let me lower the truck down, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the top side. So let me go lower it down. <laughs> All right, guys. So... From down underneath, I came up to this uh, tab that I made, and it's just a piece of flat steel bent in two different directions. And the line from the back comes in and goes in here, and from here it comes up and goes to the uh, adjustable proportioning valve and to the master cylinder right here. And then the front brakes come off of this port they come down, they follow along, and they jog over to this point where there's a 90 degree here. And then this follows along. And I tried to keep it away from the exhaust as best I could. Follows along here. And it comes to this point here. Again, I have another, another uh, tab for this flex line. And then 
One of the problems that I encountered and I wanted to show, share with you guys is a normal, um, in fact, let me show you because it'll be easier to show you. Normally, when you get a T, it looks like this. And this, this straight part is called the run, okay? And if you get a bulkhead fitting T, this run part will be like this, but this part will be long like this so that there's room for a nut here to hold it onto a tab, okay? So it'd be, that part would be really long like that, and the run would be straight. The problem that I encountered was I wanted to put this here, but if I used a regular bulkhead T, this part would have bolted in. That would have went okay for that, but this would have run into the uh, front suspension housing. So what I'm showing you is a lot of times these companies make fittings that solve problems. And this is one of those fittings. This is called a T on a run, okay? So this is the run. And what they do is they put this longer piece on one side of the run so that you can bolt the T this way. Now your line comes over here to the front, and this one's pointed in a much better position to go the way you want it. So a lot of times you'll encounter a problem on your, on your installation, and the company's probably got a fitting to solve that problem. So I wanted to show you that because that solved the problem. So from here, it goes down, across, I don't know if can you get in there and show them. It goes down and across to the other side, and then it connects to the other brake line. Let's show them that so they can see that. So it comes over here, goes into a 90, and attaches to this flex line. Super clean and simple. Um, real happy with it. And this is another place where I tried to start the bend, like say here, and then come here and down, and that's an angle, and that's another angle. It was really difficult. So what I did was I measured into the middle, and I made this shape in the middle first, and then bent over, and it works out a lot better. So doing it from the middle, a lot of times is better because uh, it helps establish the plane and uh, it cuts down on the amount of waste. So let's go over to the bench. Let me show you what I'm talking about with waste. So this is um, 15 feet of waste. <laughs> so one of the other things, another thing that I learned was buy extra tubing, all right? So I sh could have done this with 20 feet, but I ended up getting 40 feet because I was learning. I had, a, I had a very steep learning curve. All right, and I want to share that with you so that you guys won't make all the same mistakes. All right. Now, there's a lot of information out there, and they talk about stainless being really hard to use, and and uh, I'm telling you guys, it's not hard to use. All right. So I just want to take a minute and show you how easy it is to work with stainless steel. Now, the first thing that you need is a bender, a good bender. And this one's made by Earl's. Um, I think Imperial makes it for them. And it works sweet. And let me show you how good it works. So it has this little like lever here. Tubing goes in, okay? And then you flip that over and that holds the tubing in place. Now you notice that there's an R right there for the radius, okay? So typically what I'll do is, when I'm measuring it, and you can see it here on some of these pipes, you can see where I measured with a little Sharpie. See, I made a little black mark there. I don't know if that comes through or not. And so what you do is, and I'll demonstrate it on this one, so I'll make a mark. That's, that's where the center, the center of the bend I want, where I want it you know, the, the radius of the bend. Okay, so I'll take that, put it in the bender, 
And then I'll adjust the that mark so that it lines up with the radius. Okay, you can see that, okay? Then now they're saying that this stuff is really hard to bend, but really it's not hard. And what's really nice is this bender allows you to go more than 90. So if you wanted 135 degrees, you could do it, or you could do a 180. And look at that, absolutely a nice, perfect bend, all right? This was 70 bucks, 72 bucks or something. It's totally worth it. You know, you'll have it with your tool set forever. And uh, anytime you want to bend some brake line, you've got it. It works awesome for stainless steel. The other thing you're going to need is a flaring tool. Now, dash three, this is dash three. Okay, and what it does is it takes a 37 degree single flare, not a double flare. And they call it, it's just called an AN fitting. The AN stands for Army Navy. Apparently it was something developed by the military. And uh, they use it in aviation and, and things like that. And let me show you some of the fittings. So you buy these fittings here. And the way it goes together is you got your tube. The first part to go on is the tube nut and then the, the, the uh, sleeve, okay? And you see how that's got a 37 degree bevel on it? That supports the back side of the flare. Okay, so let's flare this piece of tubing real quick. And let me show you how, how easy it is to work with stainless steel. So you put this in your flare. In fact, before I do that, there's something really important I gotta show you. Okay, when you're cutting this tubing, all right, don't use a cutoff wheel and don't use a tubing cutter because what they do is they'll harden the edge. When you get your tubing, your stainless tubing from say Summit or Jags or whatever, they double anneal it. They make it a little more pliable and easier to bend and softer. When you heat it up, or in the case of using a tubing cutter and you, you cut through it, you harden that edge and it makes it more difficult to flare, all right? So what I use is a hacksaw, 32 teeth, cuts it like butter, okay? And then I just go over to my bandsaw, or not my bandsaw, my belt sander, and then I just kiss it on the belt a couple times just to true up the edge. Okay, and then this is the important part. You want to deburr it. Okay, and I'll put a, just in the description, I'll put the part numbers for these for you guys. So you want to come in here and just deburr that inner edge. Okay, that's going to give you, I don't know if they can see that, but I'll turn it and you can see how it's all beveled on the inside. And then what I do, now, if you want, you can use, you know, a file and go around the edge, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Or I just have some 180 sandpaper on this block of wood and I just go around it until it's smooth. And you can feel it with your finger. So then we'll put this in the, be in the uh, flaring tool and what you do is you make this flush with the top. And I just I eyeball it. See, that's flush with the top. Then slide this over. See these little dimples? You slide these over. And then you tighten this up. It fits inside those dimples. And it centers. Let's see if I get that. So you can see it. You can see the little cone-shaped piece in there, I hope. Okay, it centers that in the tubing. Then, this is the easy part. You just turn this down, and it's not hard. And this has a ratchet, and when it gets to the right tension, it'll just, it'll click, you'll see. There, see? It won't go any tighter. So then, 
and just undo it. It's super easy. And then, loosen the clamp. Can you see that okay? See that nice, beautiful flare? And what's neat about this flaring tool is that, I don't know if I can show you, but when you tighten this down, let me see. See how it wiggles side to side? Can you see that? Okay, well, what's happening is it actually, it burnishes and smooths and polishes the edge. It makes a really nice flare. And so then the way these work is you'd have your tube nut and it would go up and support the backside of the flare or your tube sleeve. And then your tube nut goes on. If you can get it on there. Sometimes, maybe once in a while you get one of these that's a little fussy. Okay, and so this would just thread on to here. This 37 degree flare would seat on that. And that sleeve, let me get that down there so you can see it better. That sleeve would back up the edge, the other side of the flare and then this nut would pull them tight together. And when you get it tight and on there, you've got a nice leak-free seal. So I wanted to show you that because uh, that works really cool. <laughs> and let's see, what else did I want to show you? I think that's about it. So lessons that I can you can take away from this, buy some extra material and um, like I bought double the material. Oh, I know what I want to show you. Use, okay, what I did is I used wire when I was eyeballing these different designs, okay? And one of my subscribers commented that when I use cardboard, he calls it CAD, cardboard aided design, which I thought was pretty cool. So, I guess this is going to be called WAD, W-A-D, wire-aided design. So when you're going to make your brake lines, you're going to use a WAD, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, you can see here from this, this is one of the ones I used on the front here to come up with this, you know, to get an idea. And, uh, and then I just measured all these little bends and stuff so that I knew approximately how much tubing I needed to get started on it. So this is a real handy um, way to do your brake lines. Plus, it gives you an idea to visually look at it and see if it looks goofy or not. So anyway, the WAD, wire-aided design. You'll, it, it's, a good, it's a keeper, okay? So I'm gonna put, um, the part numbers for these tools in the description for you guys. And um, if you have any questions, um, be sure to leave me uh, notes in the comments. And, and I try, I really try to answer all your questions. So, and I really enjoy them. So thank you for those. And um, oh, one of my uh, subscribers asked me, how come my truck doesn't rust? And uh, this is a product that I use. It's called Fluid Film. You can get it, I get it at Napa. You can get it on Amazon. And it's pretty cool. It's a lanolin-based, long-lasting, non-toxic, non-hazardous. Smells really good, too. So it makes the metal smell nice. Anyway, I just spray it on, shake it really good, spray it on, wipe it down with a clean rag, and no rust. Works great. <laughs> Hope that helps you guys out. Fluid Film works awesome. It'll keep your bare metal, and then it just comes off real easy when you get ready for paint. So um, this is a cool product, so check it out. It's been fun, guys. And next time, my plan is to start on the fuel system and the transmission cooler lines. So we're going to go from 3 16 to 3 8 So it should be a fun party. I'll see you next time at Idaho Fabricators.